Yeah, I would I would say because there's there's something in the vibe of, of Lee who who if you've ever seen him do interviews or anything like he's he's a very funny guy and he's a very kind of like trolly kind of guy at the same time like he he loves to have right, fun with right. people and like get reactions out of people so you get that a lot in his general okay. filmmaking and then you but then you also get a sense yeah. of like the first hour of this film is very intentionally other than the scenes where he tells you through the aspect ratio where this is all of a sudden a we're back in the flashback of the heat of the Vietnam war. Like it's a very chill kind of hangout film with these guys. You're just having a good time hanging out with these, with these, these older guys who clearly have these past pains that, you know, they're sort of emotionally picking at the wounds of as they talk to each other and as they relitigate, you know, sort of like the Imperial conflict itself and their feelings towards it and their feelings towards the violence. I mean, Lee himself will like, cut in like war like literal war crime footage of like real death uh that you see sometimes in in this film to like right sort of the same way that like marty and wolf of wall street um there's a one point like where they're all having a good time talking to the camera and then one guy says oh yeah and then that guy killed himself and it's a cut to like the uh crime scene footage of him having like slit his wrists in the bathtub like he definitely wants to get like a bit of a right. shock jolt out of you um with with that Where which makes like this, that transition this, this fun to be had here with the boys but it's not quite like there's still an inescapable past that brought them together anyway but there's still a very like real material carnage of like the actual history of the vietnam war the things that obviously you know they are dealing with feelings of look in 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 our own history i mean it opens on like muhammad ali obviously giving his argument for um you know like why would he go and kill vietnamese people like they've never been racist to him they've never killed his brothers and sisters so you know the things like that so right. like they're dealing with right. feelings of we in the u.s aren't treated very well um that they, they even bring up some like actual very real stats like the idea that um, thirty percent of the troops that got sent to Vietnam were black, despite them only re- actually representing ten percent of the population 11%. at the time. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so like they they, they bring but up. It's things. like obviously there was an advantage being taken of you know. Yeah, exactly. And also it should be noted, too, that it was predominantly poor people as well, which just also happened to affect um, African-Americans at the, at the same time, um, which is something that yeah, a lot of Vietnam War actually, films don't super bring up. But, like, uh, Spike Lee makes a huge point of, like, the Americans, um, especially the African-Americans, aren't treated well by their own country. And now here they are inflicting violence on some, in some cases, some even poorer people in a, in a country. So then you have two groups of just, like, deep deeply oppressed people killing each other for no reason. And obviously the rest of the feeling, the rest of the film is built around the feelings that they felt about doing that. And also the actual physical consequences, like what ends up happening to Delroy in this film, um, which is, I think just one of the most heartbreaking scenes in the film. Yeah. Like my dad told me actually that for the Vietnam war, when they were doing the, the draft, it was, if you were in school, then you didn't get drafted. So a bunch of people just went to university, the ones that could afford it, of course, Mm -hmm. uh, would just go to university so that they wouldn't get drafted. So pretty much it was like almost exclusively poor people that, that were going because of that. Like, it's like, I can't, I can't afford to go to university. So there's just no way. So Time to get an education with a gun in Vietnam, you know? Yeah, I guess, I guess I'll go kill a bunch of people right. for reasons I don't understand. Yeah but, yeah, but the government's telling me that it's the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the, the movie definitely is wrestling with all of those feelings. And I think what's so cool is just the way that Spike Lee also puts that into like a real deal genre movie. Like when he breaks into that second half after he spends the time doing the widescreen hangout drama, and then he does some of the flashback action adventure stuff in the 16 millimeter um, aspect ratio there as well. But then the film actually at a certain point, there's a big aspect ratio that opens up around the middle of the film where it goes full screen for when they actually enter the jungle. And when they enter the um, jungle looking for the gold, most of the film sticks with us um, in in that timeline, and it does become just a full out 
uh, Spike Lee's variation on a Vietnam version of the Treasure of Sierra. Like that's literally <laughs> yeah. just all it becomes. It's literally these guys start going insane. There there ends up being these sort of like plot developments, like the um, the bomb squad of of uh, people doing nonprofit work in Vietnam get involved. Um, then there's the actually these Vietnamese people. Um, it, it, it's unclear exactly um, like. The, whether they heard about them from other people who were around or whether they maybe heard about him from the Frenchman, um, played by John Reno, who is there like telling them where it is that they can find the gold and like giving them a means of getting it out. But there's actually these Vietnamese seemingly sort of like rebel groups or something who are there trying to hunt them down and basically kill them for what they, what they did. Um, and the thing that Lee does that's so genius is that he actually shows you a lot of, you know, what happened to the poor Vietnamese people as well so that you you can imagine an entire other movie of these um, Vietnamese people with the guns who are trying to kill these guys and you'd be like, they're doing it for the same reasons. And yep. I, and, and when, when that guy tells him, when he's looking at Delroy and he's having him literally dig his own grave, being like, where's that gold? Because I guess the gold was actually meant to be promised to Vietnamese informers. That was what the gold was initially drawn up for. Right. And it was Chadwick Boseman's idea to steal it and give it back to sort of like black revolutionary groups and civil rights groups as a way of uh, reparations for them. Um, so that was his idea. But also in order to do that, he'd have to steal it steal. from also <laughs> right. these other poor people. Um, so you can imagine an entire other movie where these people are like, these guys are trying to steal shit that our people like gave were given by the Americans for basically betraying.